Hello, my friends. This is Mitro. I am a tutor uh, who specializes in preparation for Duolingo, IELTS, TOEFL, SAT, and other tests of English. Of course, for non-native speakers, because I'm a non-native speaker myself, and also I'm a life coach. But now let's focus upon our preparation for um, Duolingo, IELTS, TOEFL. This is the first lesson, like a mini lesson, uh, which I'm going to dedicate to such a very important. Uh, aspect of your success at the test of English, especially at your production. Duolingo clarifies it and uh, defines it very, very, I think, precisely that your production includes uh, your skills for writing and speaking. Uh, let's take such a situation when you're writing an essay, for example, especially at Duolingo. Why I say especially? Because at this test you have very little time to accomplish anything. Yeah, five minutes. If we take the summary for a conversation, 75 seconds. If we take the description of the photo, 60 seconds. So it's very, very little. Of course, a person is under stress, especially the one who is not like accustomed to this. Uh, he or she is experiencing stress. So this tension causes uh, primitivization, let's say so, of your vocabulary. It's okay. It refers not only to you, or it's also like it's applied to me and to everybody because when you uh, have to produce something very fast, uh, you know, your subconsciousness doesn't work in such a free manner to produce those words which you know, which are in your, let's say, semi-passive, semi-active vocabulary. There are only those basic words left, like go, take, give, love, sup superb, and so on. Uh, and of course, what differentiates a great writer or speaker from those ordinary ones is their lexical resource. Provided that you don't have mistakes in uh, your basic grammar and your spelling, of course, because if you do, if you have, even if you use such words as this one is dyslexical, which we will discuss right now, anyway, they will not give you a high score because you lack basic grammatic skills. But given that, for example, you just, you are okay with the spelling and with basic grammar, do, does, have, has, you know, have been done and such stuff, then what differentiate is your like style and lexical resource style and resource style is a very advanced concept and sometimes we discuss it but not now let's speak about lexical resource so sometimes i love putting into my special like limited some vocabulary i have launched this vocabulary on my telephone when i hear in uh, some seminars or conversations on youtube by some educated native speakers some interesting words which are not obsolete or archaic but and which you're welcome to use at your writing and speaking uh, but you know most of the guys they don't use them because they either don't know them or they don't remember them so if I promise you if you use such words as this like a daisy call in your writing it will add several points immediately to your score because it's more more or less rare but it's not so rare that it will stick out like a thumb, yes? So, let's discuss briefly what it means and uh, I ask you to start uh, a special vocabulary in a telephone or tablet somewhere. Call it, please, like cool words for the test or rare words, not even rare, like useful words for my tests. And there you will have a list. Your list will be growing little by little. If you have about 20 to 30 words there and you refresh them every day or once every other day, I tell you when you when you write or speak, some of them will pop up from your subconsciousness, and uh, you will see the result. If you pass Duolingo, for example, for ten times, and uh, if you use, for example, these words in your attempt number eight, you will see that most most probably because I see this correlation, your score will be higher for your like attempt number eight when you use these words compared to your attempt number seven when you were using only primitive vocabulary. Okay, let's proceed to this, uh, for me not to bother you so long with my speculations. So, lackadaisical. Uh, the basic meaning of this, is the two basic meanings. Uh, either lazy, casually lazy, you know, like a lackadaisical cat, yes, or lacking care or effort or involvement. Yeah, two basic meanings. Let's read the, the examples. They, have ex they are just invaluable to us because your mind needs examples and associations. There'll be no time to correct lackadaisical driving techniques after trouble develops. You see? Lackadaisical, like lazy, without care driving techniques. It means that the person is not focused, 
he is careless about his driving, so then there is some trouble. Or lazy, listless, lacking interest. If you weren't so like a daisical in your studies, you wouldn't be so far behind in class. You understand it. For example, let's take Duolingo or IELTS or something. There are hundreds of questions on speaking and writing uh, relating to studies or psychology or sociology. Let's say studies. Like what was your favorite uh, uh, subject at, the, at school? Yes. Or who is one friend that you would like to, you know, that uh, whom you look up to? Something like that. And this word like a daisical is asking you to be used there. It's piece of cake to use it. For example, if you can copy this even. If my friend weren't so lackadaisical in his or her studies, he wouldn't be so far behind in his class. Or if I weren't so lackadaisical in my, let's say, uh, gym trainings, I wouldn't be so obese now. Something like that. You see? Or like this. Even more. Lackadaisical driving techniques. You can even put in your vocabulary, not just like a daisical, but this phrase, believe me, this just, it facilitates your memorization like 10 times, tenfold. Like a daisical driving techniques or like a daisical in your studies. So this word, by the way, has stemmed from like a day. I have opened a new tab here to show you like a day. What is like a day? Interjection archaic. Interjection means like it's not a noun or a verb or some serious part of a sentence. It's when you exclaim something. <laughs> Let's imagine that you drop something heavy on your foot, and so this is an interjection. Uh, archaic means that mostly people don't use it now, but sometimes for some emphatic uh, reasons you can use it. Used to express regret or disapproval. Alteration of elect the day, and here we see that it came from the word alas. Alas came from French. Alas means the, like regret, maybe sorrow and disappointment. Like you sigh and then alas, life is such, yes, or c'est la vie, something like that. So, uh, little by little, it turned into like a day, and like a day in its turn turned into like a daisical, this adjective. Let's read some, a couple of uh, synonyms, by the way. Oh, along the way, you see, like a daisically and like a daisicalness. Okay, you're welcome to use this noun, for example, in your essay. Like a day, his like a daisicalness uh, gets on my nerves. Yeah, amazing. It's, uh, I want to show you some. Oh, here they are. Not of not all of them are so uh, let's say precise direct synonyms, but more or less, uh, like a daisical, uh, lazy, lethargic, indifferent, idle, abstracted, limp, dreamy, inert, languid, apathetic, listless, indolent, languorous, enervated, spiritless, half arsed and half assed. <laughs> Such funny synonyms here. Yeah? Half-hearted. Oh, this is a more literary one. And. I'm happy that here is an example. Dr. Johnson seemed a little like a daisical at times. Amazing. Dr. Johnson seemed a little like a... Uh, my dad seemed a little like a, little like a daisical at times. Especially after a long working day. Something like that. Like a daisical. One more explanation. Like an energy and vitality or showing such a lack. So let's uh, recap, yeah? Like a daisical, this is an adjective which mostly means uh, either lazy, just a lazy person, lazy, like attitude, behavior, and, or such lethargic. Lethargic means uh, like an activity and vitality. For example, a like a daisical afternoon, like a daisical day, like a daisical maybe personality. So uh, put it please into your vocabulary, start this vocabulary. I will from time to time make such lessons and I tell you if you accumulate there about from 10 to 15 even such words and you will revise them every day every day every day every day until they become like your second nature uh, of course you can also practice and try to uh, include them into your essays which you write during your preparation it will be even more like even better yeah Okay, like a daisical. Mind the spelling, please. L a c k. La, uh, if we refer to Latin, you can call this c like c. I always advise, recommend you in my videos. So let's ka da e c call something like that. Or let's ka da e c call. Doesn't matter what your method is. The most important thing is that when you are under stress, especially Duolingo, uh, if you don't remember the spelling exactly, you are prone to making mistakes. Yes, I see it every day, and uh, so if you pronounce it in, in this childish Latin manner, Latska da Isical, or whatever you like, however you like, you will not make a mistake. Your subconsciousness will pronounce it, like you will hear like a voice inside you when you are typing. This voice will guide you through these letters. It works always. 
Okay, my friends, lackadaisical, meaning lazy or languid or listless or apathetic, and you're welcome to use it. Uh, if you need urgent help in preparation for Duolingo and other tests of English, please write, drop me a line. All my contact details are in the description to this video and also at the bottom of the screen. I cost money as a tutor, but I can really help, which is, I think, valuable in your case. Okay, I wish you luck and happiness and see you in our next lessons.